Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Dexter. I am a career and experiential learning advisor with the Engineering um, Career Center. Uh, welcome to Engineering Your Career Success. So to start off, uh, we would like to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in Southern Alberta, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy comprising of the Siksika, Pekani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Tsutsina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chinookie, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. Um, I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Ceci, who's going to introduce herself. Uh, just give me one second. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cecilia Erbas. I'm one of the employer specialists at Schulich. I'm actually an engineer myself. I had um, 17 years of very diverse experience, and I hope I can share those with you today. Um, I feel like we're very interested and invested in providing you with a, a holistic experience in your education. As such, we not only focus on the academic portion, but also we want you to develop very important skills that are going to help you throughout your career. We also focus on the mental health. We understand that studying engineering can be very demanding, and we are one of the few institutions that has a dedicated academic development specialist. This person's mandate is to provide you with the strategies and tools to go through your um, courses, as well as to help you to develop the necessary tools um, for your, your, your internship. Thank you, Ceci. Okay, so at this time, I'm just gonna take a few minutes to go over some of the engineering majors that are available to uh, students entering our program. And so we're very excited to announce the new biomedical engineering major. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the chemical engineering major, civil engineering, electrical, geomatics, mechanical, software, and uh, any of these can also be done as a dual degree between engineering and business. Another exciting um, addition to these majors is the various minors that are also available. So we also have a brand new aerospace engineering minor uh, that can be added to most uh, all majors. Uh, the biomedical engineering minor, computer engineering minor, digital engineering minor, mm -hmm. the energy and environment uh, minor, as well as the mechatronics and structural engineering minor, petroleum minor, transportation, and many others. Uh, one note that I'd like to mention here is that you can uh, also um, add a non-engineering minor as well to any of the engineering minors. So when you're speaking to an academic uh, advisor and they tell you that you can add one minor to your degree, they're talking about the engineering minors. And then you can also explore other minors such as science minors and the minor in entrepreneurial and enterprise development. Okay, so in talking a little bit more about the Engineering Career Center, uh, we just want to kind of reiterate what Ceci was mentioning previously. Uh, we're here to support you from day one. Uh, our engineering career specialists are here to help support you through your, uh, your internship, as well as getting that internship. So we've you know, got many opportunities to help you through this, including our new engineering career practicum program, uh, which furthers the resume tips and networking uh, with employers, practice interviews, and, and much, much more. So in talking a little bit more in depth about the engineering career practicum program, this program was designed to help uh, students starting in first year. Uh, it's a two-year program um, to help you get your, your career readiness training. So this is to help you identify your professional skills, develop your uh, job application strategies, and ultimately gain that confidence by practicing those um, critical interview skills, um, you know, right down to one-on-ones with potential interview, uh, sorry, with potential employers uh, that we get in, in our office. Um, additionally, you will also have access to an exclusive summer job board within this program. Um, you know, again, just going further to what Ceci was mentioning earlier, we're just here to support you with that one-on-one -on -one support every step of the way. Um, and in doing so, we are developing new programs to, to support our students. So since he's gonna talk a little bit more in depth about the internship program, 
um, as well as our new externship program. Absolutely. Thank you, Esther. Um, as we mentioned earlier, we want to provide you with a very well-rounded uh, education. And as such, uh, these two programs, uh, we call them work integrated learning because that's the objective that you learn through your work experience. So in a nutshell, the pathway will be, we'll start with your practical ex work experience in your first and second year degree to develop those basic professional skills, the communication skills and so on, um, to, to prepare you for your internship. Um, internship is intended when you are between your third and fourth year. Uh, this is unlike practicum that is a four month uh, work experience. Uh, we want you to be working with the employer for a longer period of time, giving you the opportunity to develop further skills. So a such internship is a 12 to 16 months uh, paid work experience. Um, and it has a, a component um, to help you develop technical skills in addition to the interpersonal skills. Um, of course, despite the challenges that we had, as, as we all know, in 2020 and part of 2021, we still are very strong in our presence locally and globally. Um, despite the challenges, we were still able to have students working overseas in countries like Spain, Germany, UK, USA, China, and Japan. And um, again, despite the challenges, we, we developed very strong relationships with employers there that constantly throughout the years continue to hire our interns. Um, and if, you know, by any means, uh, practicum or internship is not for you, um, you still have another opportunity to develop those very important employable skills or transferable skills, as we want to call them. Um, so this year, we um, ran the first part of our externship program. So externship, unlike internship, you are actually not working for the employer for that period of time. However, the objective of this program is for you to work on a project that a company um, is gonna fund. Um, again, the objective is to provide you with the opportunity not only to develop the technical and interpersonal skills, but also to create those very important professional connections. This is a very defined uh, deliverable, and it also has a very defined period of time, which is around 150 to 250 hours, and it's typically run within uh, the month of June on August this year. So, um, important to mention that this program is also available for our master engineering students as well. Perfect. Thank you, Ceci. Okay, uh, so I also just want to take a little bit of time to talk about the various opportunities uh, for student research. Uh, this would be, you know, something that you may want to inquire further about if you're looking for a career in research and development, if you're looking for a career in um, just working perhaps in, in a research lab at an academic institution or just pursuing those graduate studies. Um, so definitely talking to us a little bit more about uh, what the peer research awards can offer you. This would be something uh, you know you can definitely ask your uh, academic advisor as well as your career advisor more about. Okay, uh, we also offer a certificate in engineering leadership. So again, this is just helping our students further those professional skills to complement their technical skills by way of an official Schulich certificate. Um, so, you know, in doing so, you're going to attend a bunch of interactive workshops and events throughout the year, uh, and you are going to have some time for that one-on-one -on -one support um, to develop the self-awareness and the skills required for that effective uh, teamwork communication and time management skills that you're looking for. Uh, we're also very excited to say that we have many teams and clubs uh, within our faculty. There are over 80, um, and we are pleased to offer all of our teams and clubs uh, a dedicated space for them to work um, and access the tools and equipment that they need to prepare for those competitions. Uh, so not only is this a great way to interact with uh, fellow students, it's also a great way to develop those hands-on skills um, that you know, can benefit you when you go out to, to go into your internship. Okay, so in talking a little bit more about those spaces, uh, we are talking about the Make Maker Multiplex, which offers uh, the 3D printer room, uh, the metal and wood shop, sound lab, robotics and mechatronics room, a welding shop, as well as an art and textiles room. 
And we also offer this data lab, a room or a lab rather, where you can build uh, robots, explore virtual reality and the augmented reality room, as well as the Internet of Things lab. So if you'd like to, at this time, you can take a screenshot uh, to save the link so that you can explore that uh, later, um, as well as you can also visit our booth and we can give you some more information about it there. Okay. All right, and finally, just wanted to talk you all a little bit about the uh, capstone design fair so all of our students uh, do in their fourth year a capstone project uh, and then it goes into a design fair so these are typically done in person with many spectators uh, there however as Ceci was outlining before due to the to the recent events as of 2020 we did have to adapt and move this on to a, a virtual platform um, so rest assured our students still have the opportunity to showcase their projects um, so we don't anticipate that going forward there will be any issues with these design fairs they're still you know um, easily accessed and industry is is um, interested in what our students are, are doing within these fairs. So um, at this time, I'm going to pass it back over to Ceci, who is going to introduce one of our students to talk to you a little bit more about the biomedical engineering program um, and her experiences within it. Thank you, Dexter. And of course, we wanted you to uh, hear uh, from somebody direct, who has had direct experience, uh, not just only with our um, biomedical engineering minor, but also through her internship. So we have asked Lisa to join us today uh, to share her experience with you. Um, I'm sorry, but we should have mentioned earlier, if there's any questions, we'll definitely have time for a Q&A session after uh, the slides. Um, and also please um, visit us in the booth. All of us will be available to answer your questions. So that being said, Lisa, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be speaking for you today. Um, I've had a great experience at Schulich um, between clubs, between research, between my um, internship. So hopefully I can, you know, share my story for you guys and maybe you'll learn something from it. But um, I went into engineering, not necessarily knowing what I wanted to do. I was like, okay, I like math, I like science. I wanna build something, but I don't really know what I'm interested in. Um, so I started off just looking into clubs to join. I ended up picking something called Zeus Electric Motorsport and we built an electric motorcycle for racing. And I was just like, that sounds cool. I'm gonna apply. Um, I applied first year, I actually got rejected, didn't make it. Um, but then I applied the next year and I finally made it on the team. So I think that's kind of another good lesson is you know some of these teams can be pretty competitive and uh, you know any, extracurricular position can be competitive, but don't be discouraged, like rejection is part of it. Um, I was rejected first time I applied, but then when I applied again, I worked my way up and became president. So don't be discouraged, guys. Um, anyway, I had so much fun at this club. Like I learned so many things you just can't learn from class. You learn how to work with people. You learn how to run a project. You learn how to um, take a, a big thing like a motorcycle and then break it down into little doable activities, right? Like engineering is not sitting down doing calculus pro problems, right? It's about taking a big problem and chopping it up into small problems and fixing it. Um, so yeah, I've had so much fun on Zeus, plus like met so many great people, even for just making friends, like join a club. Um, with the caveat, don't join clubs for the purpose of just a resume booster because like people can tell if you're not actually interested and only half committed just join clubs you're genuinely interested in and you want to put time into because when you put the time into it that's when you learn that's when you have fun um, that's when you grow as an engineer um, so i guess the next next part of my journey is i really liked working on the motorcycle but i'm like i don't know if this would i would want this to be my entire career um, eventually I did settle that I wanted to do biomedical engineering. I don't really have a light bulb moment for why I wanted to do biomedical engineering. It was kind of just, I talked to a lot of people. Um, I talked to some people in the biomedical engineering program. And I'm like, that sounds cool. Um, but I guess the reason I decided on biomedical engineering is I found it technically really interesting um, because I was really interested in like neuroscience, brain stuff, 
And what's insane is that you can take electrical engineering, the concept you learn in class, and literally apply it to the brain. Because the brain is a circuit, right? It's just not made out of metal. It's made out of tissue. Um, so I just thought that was insanely cool. And um, I think another reason why I gravitated towards biomedical engineering is kind of a personal uh, reason. And like neurological disease really hits close to my heart, um, especially like mental illness, um, working with stigma, mental health. So um, it's, it's good to pick something that not only interests you, like you like the science behind it, but you know, maybe there's more of a social impact aspect um, that can really pull you into the job further. So that's why I picked biomedical engineering, which is, you know, the design of medical devices. How can we apply engineering to healthcare problems? Um, once I decided that, I was like, okay, I need a strategy to you know, get my foot in the door. Um, a great way to do that is actually research. Um, like they were talking about Pure, they'll basically, uh, you apply for funding and then they pay you to work for a summer for a professor. Um, so I went to a conference. Conferences are a great way to find, you know, research professors. Talked to a professor who was um, working in the area of, you know, neuroscience and engineering. And um, I guess he liked me because I had that Zeus experience, right? I worked on building the motorcycle. I was good at hands-on stuff and building. And I think working on a team really helped me get that research position. Um, so I was so happy to get this research position and um, kind of start in the area I really wanted to focus my career on. Um, so I did a summer of research and then for the next year for my internship, um, there was actually a startup in Calgary called Neurora that did work in the area I did research in. So I reached out to that same professor who was working at the startup and said, hey, like I have great hands-on experience from Zeus. And also I've done the neuroscience research. I would be a great fit for this position. Um, I interviewed for it and luckily I was able to get the job. So I um, was very happy, I guess. A quick background about my job. It's a startup called Neurora and we work in brain computer interface. So that is essentially brain implants that can record brain signals, but also um, stimulate, so send out signals to the brain and they use it in applications for epilepsy, they use it in Parkinson's, um, all kinds of applications. So it's a super fun job at my startup, kind of my dream job. So sometimes I have to um, pinch myself. It's really fun working at a startup because um, it's a lot smaller. So you get to work on a lot more aspects of a project than you would at a large company. I don't think enough people really apply to work at startups um, in engineering. Like a lot of people default to applying for you know larger companies, but what I really recommend if you're looking for internships or summer work, just like see what kind of local startups are around here. There might be something you know in your area and uh, it's really fun. You learn a lot being in a startup. Um, so yeah, I guess kind of in summary, the way I, I built myself up to this position is I kind of see my career as a big game of strategy and just kind of picking puzzle pieces of positions that I genuinely like. Like there's a puzzle piece of the motorcycle team, which I really liked. I learned a lot from that, which built me up to my research, which gave me the neuroscience background for the position I really like. So um, definitely, start early with um, looking into what you're interested in and um, building those puzzle pieces. So yeah, that's uh, all for me. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Perfect, thank you, Lisa. That was wonderful. So um, I hope that you can see how uh, the things that we've described within this presentation can kind of all culminate within to one by uh, Lisa's story. Um, at this time, though, we do have time for some questions, so we can turn it over to, to you uh, to ask those questions, and we will do our best to answer them. Hi, everybody. There was a question specifically for Lisa, just um, balancing extracurriculars versus your scheduling versus your courses. Um, what insight do you have to, to that? 
Um, number one, don't apply to a million things that you're half interested in. Just pick and choose a few that you're very interested and love and will fully commit to um, is a good one. But also you need to plan in times for breaks and just time to yourself. Like I love my job. Um, I love the work I'm doing, but if you don't schedule in time for breaks, like you'll get so burnt out so quickly. Um, and it sounds super counterintuitive, but make sure you like book off time to do stuff that's unrelated to engineering, unrelated to school. Um, just take time for yourself, whatever it be, maybe. Yeah, that's a great insight to that. That, um, And I think there were a lot of questions about what minor to take, what courses, combinations. And I think, you know, you can plan your schedule and your time and your education and your experience with us the way you see fit. So we have academic advisor, career advisors here to help you plan out what schedule you want and what education you want. So if you find you're being limited for some reason, there might be an option to work yourself around it. So make sure you reach out to us so we can help you with those, those questions. I'll keep watching the chat. Um, uh, somebody asked, is there internship opportunities on campus? I don't know, CC or Dexter? Yeah, for sure. We actually do have, uh, this is our second year that we have engineering students working in our team as well, doing their internship. So there, there's definitely opportunities, not just within the Engineering Career Center, but also other uh, departments within Shillick. Perfect. And to clarify, um, the internship is on top of your four-year program. So it is a um, 12 to 16 month program outside after your third year. So you would be here um, for, with us for a minimum of five years for that opportunity. So that was a question. Um, you can add an out of faculty minor, which Dr. pointed out um, at the beginning of the session, that if you are interested in something outside of engineering um, that's non-related, if the faculty will admit you, then you can add an out of faculty minor, but scheduling is going to be your responsibility. So if you joined us for the last session, um, engineering is quite tight when it comes to to scheduling. So again, as I said, academic advisors are here to help you kind of navigate what you need and what we can help you um, finish, get your get what you need out of our um, program. I'll keep monitoring the chat here. Um, Lisa, I'm not sure if you can answer the difference between the major in biomedical or the minor. I don't know if that's too detailed for you, but um, let me know if you're able to, you know, question what the difference between a minor in biomedical and the major in biomedical. Yeah, so actually I'm in the biomedical minor. So I know like a bit about the differences between the major and the minor. Um, honestly, both of them can serve you very well as a biomedical engineer. It just depends on what kind of work you wanna do. Um, so if you wanna do a specialized kind of thing, like for example, you wanna make software for healthcare applications, then you know I would recommend just taking a software major and a biomedical minor. Um, it's really about kind of looking into what courses there are and what they take. But if you're interested in more like something general, like healthcare consulting and not doing like the nitty gritty coding or nitty gritty design, but more like project management, um, healthcare consulting, then you can take the major. It's just very general, right? Yeah, and one thing I wanted to to add, it's also like, for example, if you're studying mechanical engineering and, and you wanna do the biomedical minor, it could lead you to opportunities on developing, for example, prosthetics. So you can combine both the mechanical design with a little bit of the biomedical aspect as well. So um, as Lisa mentioned, that gives you a little bit more of, um, again, that well-rounded aspect. Of course, if you wanna be more focused on that, we obviously suggest going through the biomedical uh, major, major, sorry. That was perfect, uh, Cecilia. There was a question about, do you feel that a minor or specialization will narrow down your opportunities? So um, if you wanna to speak to that, I do you think having a minor or a specialization will narrow your job opportunities? Um, 
I wouldn't necessarily say so. I mean, I, I will build on what Lisa mentioned earlier. I think that the choices you make in terms of your courses and your minor would also show what you're passionate about. Um, nevertheless, I don't think it, it defines your future per se. Um, you know, I, I have a background in industrial engineering, but I work mainly in petroleum, in the petroleum industry. So I wouldn't necessarily say that my choice of working, uh, focusing on manufacturing at first determine my career. I think it gives you a, a very uh, good foundation as Lisa mentioned, that kind of um, more, um, not necessarily generic, but well-rounded aspect. Um, but if you are thinking to, uh, you know, showcase your employers or your potential career path in the future, more so in line to something that you're more passionate about, definitely the minor is an opportunity to do so. Great, thank you. And just to note, you do not require to take a minor. These are additional. You can just go through the general program. Also noting there are no first year minors. So different minors are added to the program in different time or different year of education. So you will be advised when the application opens for the minors, uh, it, when it's applicable, but there are no first year minors in engineering. Again, an outside minor would be a different criteria, which we can't really advise on. Um, Dexter, can you just review again the criteria for the internship? What is required to be eligible for the, the internship program? Yeah, for the internship program specifically, absolutely. Uh, so in order to be eligible for the internship program, and I'm just gonna go back a few slides here. Scroll back to Ceci's slide here. So uh, you would have to be third year complete. Uh, so you're going to apply between the end of your third year and the start of your fourth year. Uh, and you know, upon a successful um, job offer, you would go for 12 to 16 months, depending on, on what that offer was. Uh, and then you would come back to complete your final fourth year. Uh, the, the catch with the internship is that you have to come back to a minimum of three courses. Okay, so uh, one question that we're often asked is, you know, if I don't get it immediately within my, you know, at the end of my third year, uh, do I have another chance to get it? And the answer is, is yes, you can work with your academic advisor to kind of spread out that, that last year and ensuring that you have three courses to return back to. Um, so that's kind of in a nutshell, the eligibility requirements is that you have to be third year complete, right? And you have to be coming back for a minimum of three courses. Perfect. And Dexter, do you want to maybe talk about uh, the difference between the BCom dual degree and maybe adding um, a minor? This one was specifically the entre entrepreneurship minor. Um, kind of what would be the, the differences there? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, the dual degree is going to be uh, a much more in-depth program. Uh, that program is going to be six courses per term beginning in your first year, uh, and it will go for uh, five years, okay, in order to complete that. So you are adding an additional year, and to be honest, most students aren't completing it within the, the five years. A lot of them are stretching it out to six, uh, and then if they do an internship, it is, it is seven. Uh, that said, it can be done in five and six with an internship. The biggest difference, like I said, is going to be the depth of the content that you're exploring. So essentially, uh, the dual degree is like coming out with two degrees at the end of five years. Okay, uh, The minor is five courses. Okay, So you're not taking the, the same number of courses. You're also not getting the same exposure to, to the material that the major would be uh, given. Okay. Um, so ultimately, uh, both of them are competitive. Uh, the dual degree is a little bit more competitive than the mid minor, uh, but both have become quite competitive in the last few years. Great. So any more questions on admissions or minor information, please join our chat in our booth. Um, we have academic advisors over there who can maybe get into further details about that. So um, yes, they are obviously connected to our internship and our co-op program. Um, I did have a question about, is there an average, a, a, a average needed to get into the internship program? Yeah, so all of our students have to maintain good standing, which is a 2.0 minimum to be eligible for, for internship. Perfect. I'm just going to keep reviewing the chat to see if there's any unanswered questions about our internship, our career advisors, um, or our pro practicum program. 
So you please go ahead and add this information. This will be and is being recorded. So you will be able to find this on our Shulik website and also um, later in the week um, under YouTube if you're looking under those um, resources. So you will be able to review it again. Please pass it on to your families and friends. If you had any questions, if you feel you missed anything, it's a great opportunity to go back and review. So we'll keep watching um, the chat right now or the, sorry, the Q&A. If there's any additional questions for our career advisors, please take the opportunity now to put your questions there and or join us in our um, booth on the main page. So we're under STEM in the open house. So we're under STEM and you can find us the engineering, the School of Engineering booth is there. You can click on that and join us in our chat. I can answer a general question about courses. The minor does possibly add a few additional courses. Each program is a little bit different of how many courses you need to complete to graduate. So um, we do have our academic calendar that is a public document that you can review and it will break down what courses are or are not needed depending on the program you go into and the minor you wish to take. So depending on the program will depend on the number of courses. The minor still can be completed within four years. It is set and programmed to be, to be completed successfully. Obviously, if you go on internship, that will be five. You can extend up to eight years as per our regulations and nine if you go on internship. So we can plan your program to, to, to the best that you would like. So um, those options are available and that's why we have academic advisors available to you. So uh, I'm not sure, CC, if you have any information on starting salaries. I know we have not a lot of information for external data, but maybe you can um, speak on startup salaries. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a couple of questions that I can address as well, actually combined. So um, I see a question in the chat about um, outcomes um, in terms of careers for engineers. Um, again, I, I will be from what Lisa said earlier, uh, you can work in different roles, whether it's on the technical path, like for example, you can work for an R&D um, company, or you can do a little bit more of um, uh, generic, let's say, position like in project management or project engineering. So it really depends what you want your career path to be. Like in my case, for example, I worked for five years in human resources as an engineer. Um, and my role was very focused on human resources, uh, but I also worked in sales. I worked in the field and so on. So um, I would say if anything, engineering always will give you the opportunity to develop or, or to actually uh, provide those critical thinking skills that can really be applied to any role. Um, and I mean that with all my heart for sure. Um, in terms of the average salary, you know, that, that is a very tricky question in the sense that um, it depends what you're comparing to. So I always think about compensation rather than salary because salary could, you know, you don't necessarily know if you're comparing apples to apples. A software engineer working for Google will be making something completely different than working for a startup in Calgary. So um, I don't necessarily have a range to provide you um, because the market is like that. The, you know, there's minimum, max, and average salaries. But if you're really interested to get that information, you can also get to APEGA's website. That's the um, uh, provision regulatory body for the Professional Engineering Association. And they do have a salary survey uh, published there that is uh, available to the public. Um, and there was more question about, uh, is it likely that companies will hire you after you're done university if you did your internship? Absolutely, um, it, wor it works both ways. The way we like to look at an internship, it is really a recruiting opportunity for both the employer and you as the student. You get to decide if that's the company that you would like to work for after graduation, if it's the right work environment, if you feel technically challenged or you develop the skills that you were looking for and so on. So on average, um, our last survey showed that 89% of the students that did their internship in company A, let's say, they were willing to return to work for that company. And of course, there are other employers that use practicum and or internship to build their talent pipeline. So for example, you would do your first or second year practicum with them, and then they will hire you back for the internship. And then ideally that would turn into an opportunity to start your EIT or a uh, new grad position with that company. So. Great, thank you very much. Um, questions about, again, a PEGA. So I did post that 
in the thing. So that is the um, Alberta. I gotta find the lingo. Sorry, Cece, do you have the lingo what it stands for? I'm on the page. Yeah, Alberta Professional Engineering and Geosciences Association. Thank you. All right. And it's easy, A-P-E-G-A, -E so A. if anybody missed it. Yeah. And that's, all, of course, for Alberta. Be mindful that every province has different regulations as well as different countries. So. Great, I think um, we've answered a lot of the questions um, regarding the internship and the co-op and career opportunities. Uh, that are out there, please um, add some more in the Q&A if you have some additional questions for our career advisors. If not, I appreciate the time. We can keep monitoring the chat for a few more minutes and please join us in our booth in the chat session if you have some questions outside of this. And as I mentioned, these are gonna be report, recorded and posted for review later. There's a quick question about the dual degree. Right now, our only approved dual degree program is with business. We do have some students who get admitted into multiple degrees, a combination degrees. Um, again, scheduling will be um, part of the student's responsibility. So just make sure you're in touch with academic advisors if you are admitted into two degrees. Um, engineering specifically is what we can speak about. We are a little restricting as we do have some significant prerequisites. So speak with all your advisors that are required and we will help you get through your program or programs. I just saw a question in the chat um, about which is it better to have an internship or a master's degree? Uh, and I know Ceci can talk a little bit more uh, about this, but I just wanted to mention that uh, the two are not exclusive. So you can have an internship and a master's degree. Um, so I wouldn't say one is better than the other. It just depends on where you want to go with your career and ultimately what it is you're looking to get out of it. Quick question about the majors. Um, ultimately, if you review the session that we did, the last session that we did at 12 o'clock, it was about choosing your majors. First year students come into engineering using, doing a common core. They then are placed into their major. So civil, for example, into their second year. So yes, a civil engineering degree and a business degree would be classified as our dual degree program. I'm an, my name's Janelle, I'm an academic advisor. So if you, um, there is a team of six of us. So there are lots of us here. So the majority as this is the career session um, are on the chat right now. So if you have questions, I know some people are having issues with the chat. If you wanna get a hold of a career advisor, you can try our, our email is enginfo, E-N-G-G-I-N-F-O at ucalgary.ca. So I was just going to add a note to Dexter's comments about the master's program. Uh, you can also still do um, have an internship what you're doing your master's. So even if, for example, you still choose to focus on your academics, what you were doing your undergrad, like, you know, maybe practicum or internship was not, you were not feeling ready for it, you can still do it as part of your master's. But um, as you said earlier, I, I always think about it from where is it that you want to take your career and the timing. Um, a lot of you know, many people will say, oh, the best timing to do a master's is right after under, uh, undergrad, while others will, will advise you to take a little bit more time, get some work experience under your belt, maybe five or six years, and then decide what you're really passionate about, and then choose a, a grad program that is in line to your career, long-term career goals. Uh, I just addressed the question about the dual degree program. If you don't apply for it within your first year, uh, it is possible for you to apply for it within second year during program placement. Uh, the, the one thing you would want to note there is that um, because the program is quite competitive, uh, an advisor would likely advise you to, to apply for first year. If you didn't get it, then apply again at second year. It just gives you kind of two shots at it. Um, 
But that said, it is possible to apply solely within second year. Unfortunately, if you didn't make it uh, within that year, there would not be another opportunity to apply for that program, uh, simply because the, the way it's structured uh, to, with the six courses per term for five years, it would no longer be a benefit for you after that point. So we would urge you to uh, speak with business on other opportunities, but ultimately, the short answer is yes, you can apply for it within your second year, but your chances may become uh, more, it may be a more of a competitive process within your second year. Great. Well, we'll we will be ending the session here very soon. So ultimately note that the practicum or the co-op and the internship program will be giving you the opportunity while once admitted, you'll get the information. You don't have to apply for it now at admissions. Um, so Dexter and Celia, do you want to just close it up with any last notes? And Lisa, anything you want to close up with some last notes? Just wanted to thank everybody for the great questions and the comments. And yeah, please come and visit our booth. We'll be glad to chat with you one-on-one -on -one if you have any other questions. Yeah, absolutely. Please feel free to come see us. Uh, and these are all excellent questions and we're happy to answer any others that you may think of. And Lisa, did you want to close us out? Any um, final words? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Thanks so much for listening, guys. Um, I'm super biased, but I've had a great experience um, here and in engineering, and uh, it's a great degree. You get to be very creative and uh, have fun. <laughs>